most people will be <clears throat> self-employed at some point and right. are not taking care of their finances. Oh, and I yeah. have seen that go wrong oh, in yeah. horrendous ways. <laughs> yes, but... So talk a little about how to stay sensible about that. Well, you know, as far as like, you know, when, when the money's coming in, you need to invest it properly, you know, and and be smart about it. Don't go buy things that are going to immediately lose value. Don't go and buy fancy cars and all the rest of that stuff that immediately loses value. What I've done is kind of invested in real estate and and buying rental properties and things like that. When I was making a lot of money, and when I am making a lot of money, it's, you know, I put it towards something that is sustainable, that is something that, because I'm always thinking about my retirement. You know, at some point, you know, they're not going to call me to play guitar for them anymore. They're not going to have me produce the records or write their songs, you know, and and I need to figure out, I need to have that in place before that happens. So, you know, for me, it's like, you know, rather than going and getting drunk at the bar every night and buying, you know, thousand dollar rims for my car, you know, I'm going to put that money towards, um, you know, buying things that, that can actually, you know, have an income for me, you know, purchasing rental properties, you know, or putting, you know, getting your down payment together or live in a place for a while. And once you live in that place for a while, you know, you can eventually um, turn it into a rental property. Like, you know, the, the place that I bought in Green Hills, you know, we lived, I lived there for nine years. And then after that, you know, when we built the house here in Franklin, I kept that place. And rather than selling it, I kept it and rented it out. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just keep it moving along that way. So I think that's an important part, you know, that... You know, I think about like if you get a cut and you get a $500,000 check, you could go and buy a $500,000 house, you know, and then that money is gone. Or you could go buy yourself a little $100,000 house and you've got, you know, how, you know, say you could live on 50 grand a year. You know, how many years could I live on that money and try and get the next cut? You know, rather than spending all that money on one house, you know, what the way that I would look at it is, you know, buy something that's reasonable and sock that money away in case there's a rainy day, you know, and, and, and use that to help to get your next cut, you know, so it gives you that time so that you can not worrying about, okay, not worrying about, I got to pay my mortgage payment, or I got a car payment to pay. Now I'm focused on, you know, I can just focus on writing my songs and I can stay creative and I can be paying for my demos and, you know, all that kind of stuff and paying Plugger to go and pitch them for me and all that kind of stuff, which is, you know, then, again, that's investing your money in your career, you know, rather than, you know, buying... In a fancy car. Fancy car, fancy house, <laughs> and all that, and then you got nothing, you're like, oh, okay, well, all that money's gone, but I got this great house, and I'm not sure how I'm going to pay the light bill, but... <laughs> <laughs> I have no furniture, I can't afford to eat. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, sure.